Hi, everyone. Welcome this afternoon to this breaking news live um, discussion of the letter that nine senators, Republican senators, sent to President Trump yesterday asking him to not suspend the H programs. Now, it's not only the H-1B is in the letter discussed, but the H-2A and the H-2B. So I wanted to go through that live because I know it's extremely important and it's on the mind of a lot of people out there worried that in the coming days there's going to be a suspension of the H-1B program in particular, but also the H-2A and the H-2B programs. So I wanted to get out there really quickly and really discuss this live and get that information out to you so it can kind of calm some of your nerves based on what the media is saying or what comes out in the next day or so. So I have with me right now too the actual letter. So we're going to talk directly off of it so I can quote for you some of the actual language of the letter that sent to him that was sent to him yesterday. And we could really get into the reality of what this means, how will it affect all of us, how it will affect the communities in different sectors, and maybe answer some of your questions that you had. I already got a couple of questions coming through. So want to make sure that I get the questions answered on this very, very sensitive and important topic. My name, if any of you out there don't know who I am, my name is Andrea Shev. I'm the main managing attorney at Shev Law Group in Los Angeles, California. I've been doing immigration for over 17 years, and I post videos all the time on all different kinds of immigration topics. Um, right now, a lot is focused on COVID-19, obviously, and how COVID-19 is affecting the immigration community all over the world but um, I do it on all different topics, trying to educate, trying to teach, trying to give really reliable information to as many people as I can to help out everybody. So we get really accurate, good information when we're trying to get our visas or get renewed or do whatever we need to do in the immigrant community out there. So let's um, start talking about this actual letter. To give some background to it, um, last month, President Trump put out an executive order that I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that stated that there was a suspension of immigration in the United States. Um, I did another video on that, which you're more than welcome to go take a look at, to go in depth in the actual executive order. But in that order on the last page or so, there was a little sneak of a comment by him that said that he wanted suggestions from everyone else um, regarding other non-immigrant possible programs that should be suspended to protect the U.S. citizen employees out there. So I think a lot of these letters that are coming to President Trump, especially from, for example, the Immigration Lawyers Association that also sent a letter to him um, asking and stressing to not suspend these, or some of them are asking to suspend them, um, asking to not suspend them are coming because the day is approaching when President Trump will make that decision to either suspend or not suspend other programs, um, non-immigrant programs, such as the H-1B or the H-2A or the H2, H-2B, or also on the tables, the L-1 and some other different options, different visas that are out there that people are throwing around um, and suggesting to him to suspend, or in this case, thankfully, to not suspend. So I wanted to go through this letter because really it is president that um, some senators, first of all, and on top of that, Republican senators would actually write such a very supportive letter for the H community. Um, and I really wanted to stress it and go through it because I believe and I'm hoping and I'm sure all of you out there are hoping also that he takes this seriously and he really reads this letter and really understands the the huge impact that the H-1B community has, not only the H-1B community, we're going to talk also about the H-2 and H-2B community, has on this country and the recovery from this pandemic. So let's get into it. The first sentence immediately talks about, um, they write this letter today to urge you, meaning President Trump, to consider the important role non-immigrant temporary visa programs will play in aiding post-pandemic economy recovery in America. First sentence. So clearly they're making a very big stance on saying, look, there's no question that the non-immigrant community is needed in this, in this country, and especially now in the recovery from this pandemic. It is not a time, if ever, to suspend these types of visas. So the first sentence right off the bat. Now, I've been questioned, and someone wrote to me, 
the majority of the letter they think, and it's been said that mostly talks about H2A and H2B workers, which is temporary and seasonal workers. Um, even though he, or the people that wrote this letter to President Trump focus a lot on the H2A and H2B, it is clearly by the words of the document, they are talking also about the H1B program. Because in the list of different fields that need to be protected under the you know, non-immigrant visa programs, they mention not only farming, forestry, packing, hospitality, and healthcare, they also talk about technology and communications and information companies, which would not really fall under the H2A or H2B world. So it's, you know, it's really covering all of the H1B, H2A, H2B type visas. So I don't think we should be thinking, oh, well, they completely ignore the H1B and this is really just about the H2A and H2B. They clearly are maybe not directly, directly discussing it, but they are definitely discussing it in the realm of what's going really on. And we really need to look at the non-immigrant community in general and not just the H, you know, not just the suspension of all types of visas because we think they're going to take away jobs from U.S. citizens that are unemployed currently. So let's go through a few other um, top, you know, sentences and discussion points that they bring up in this letter, which I think is the real key to this discussion that we're having, is to show us that there are people behind us. There are actual senators, Republican senators, that are actually in support of us keeping these programs in place and are stating clearly the arguments that I've repeatedly stated and many, many other people in the immigration community have stated. And now it's in black and white, not only from the Democratic side or the congressional side, but from really the senators that are really the ones that are in the face on the news media of against this, of the face of the people that are thinking of suspending it. So it's nice to see from their side some support on immigration um, reform and keeping these visas in place. So they go on to say, um, even with all these jobs and all this unemployment that's out there with 33 million Americans unemployed and close to 8 million American small businesses at risk, some of these struggling businesses rely on labor that many Americans may not be qualified or able to perform, even in the aftermath of the pandemic. And some of these businesses operate in industry sector sectors that are not experiencing high unemployment. Like I've said before, you know, technology is not really suffering right now um, with this pandemic. It's in fact, they're probably on overdrive, a lot of the technology world. So there's not a lot of unemployment in that area. So that area is pretty full. And the people that are unemployed are in sectors possibly or more likely that are extremely affected by the pandemic and the business is closing. So to take the people that have lost their jobs and stick them in areas that are not even in need of jobs, and even if we took away those visa holders, they wouldn't have the qualifications to fill those jobs, it doesn't make any sense. And that's what they're supporting here. It says, it goes on to say, in contrast with the overall national unemployment figures, or in particular geographical locations where qualified labor is scarce, American businesses that rely on help from these visa programs should not be forced to close without serious consideration. Guest workers are needed to boost American business, not take American jobs. And I think that's the thing that people have to understand is that a lot of the visa holders are not here to take away the jobs from American workers. And I'll say this, like I've said it a million times in different videos, the H-1B program and the H-2 and H-2B programs they're required to try to find people to take those jobs. It's not like they just get to, you know, override the U.S. worker and take, you know, and choose a non-immigrant from a foreign national to take those positions. They have to take people first from the U.S. And not even that. They would like to take U.S. citizens to fill those jobs. They don't necessarily want to take foreign workers because in order to take a foreign worker, they have to deal with all of this stuff. They have to deal with all the logistics of going through immigration to petition them, the, ex the excessive cost, which is probably going to be increased also to hire them. It's not an easy process. It's a process that is expensive and time consuming, and it's very difficult for the U.S. business to deal with. So, it, you know, they're not trying to replace the U.S. workers or, or go over the U.S. workers. It's just they can't find the, the manpower in order to fill the positions. So that's what this letter is backing up, that the qualified labor is scarce in these areas where the H-1B, H-2A, and H-2B fit in. 
they go on to talk about, you know, the seasonal guest workers and the temporary workers, which we all are aware of with our industry right now with the pandemic going on, how critical we need, you know, the farmers and the truck driver, you know, the people, not truck drivers, but people that are transporting our our food and all everyone that's in that industries that are temporary workers, that we don't have enough people to fill those positions are absolutely critical. In addition to our healthcare workers, um, scientists, professors that are working in the front lines, trying to beat this pandemic, coming up with um, vaccines and so on and so forth. Now, there's already been a statement made by President Trump that you know there's exemptions for people in those areas. But we have to understand that those people are also people, a lot of them on actual non-immigrant visas. So yes, at the very least, we need to make sure that those people are protected from any kind of suspensions that he's even thinking about. But, you know, we're not just talking about seasonal and temporary workers. We're talking about all industries in this letter. And that's accentuated by them bringing up, of course, the people that are in the medical fields, which are at the front lines right now, fighting the COVID-19 and trying to come up with vaccines and so on and so forth. So I think once again, they support and they're bringing up all these arguments, which is nice to see. And I'm sure a lot of you would appreciate that are in support of keeping the H-1B in place and the H-2A and H-2B and any other L visas. It's nice to see that someone within the Senate or nine senators are actually coming forth and actually putting it in writing to the president to support this. So as we continue, um, they say later on, before an employer can qualify for participation in H-2A or H-2B program, they want to explain to the public, they must establish the lack of American workers. Like I said before, you can't, you know, these employers can't just go out and just find somebody and just hire them just because they're a foreign national. They have to prove that they've tried to get a U.S. worker to fill the position and they couldn't. And especially in the H-2A and H-2B programs, they have to do that. There's no option. So it's super important that these people understand or the people that are against or in favor, I should say, of suspending these programs, that they have to understand it's not that they're not trying. They're trying and they can't. So they're forced to get people that are not U.S. citizens to fill these jobs. Um, they go on to talk about um, you know, the Department of Labor process and the certification required by the Department of Labor when you file any of these type of visas. The Department of Labor has to give their certification of the actual application. Um, in 2019 alone, the Department of Labor certified over 300,000 positions, meaning that these employers could not fill, find people to fill these positions. So they had 300,000 that they approved to actually fill these positions. And the economic devastation that has occurred due to necessary precautionary measures taken to slow the spread of coronavirus would only be exasperated if vulnerable businesses do not get the temporary labor they need to stay afloat. Okay, if you go on and you read, I mean, they go on and they talk about, you know, the CARES Act and, and the need for people and the all, you know, the people that are unemployed, the chances of them coming back in to take the positions that these visa holders have is very unlikely due to the situations that you've seen on the news currently with the unemployment situation, with the um, unemployment insurance that's being paid to U.S. citizens. It's kind of hard for them to take temporary and seasonal jobs necessarily. So that's going to be a roadblock for us getting those U.S. citizens into those positions also. Now, the another quote that I wanted to say to you all to show you um, what this letter is really getting at is they talk about companies and industry sectors across our economy have and will continue to play critical roles in responding to and recovering from coronavirus. Um, exempt, exempted aliens seeking to enter the United States on immigrant visas to work as healthcare professionals and medical researchers or perform work essential to combating, recovering from, and otherwise alleviating the effects of the pandemic. Many of these companies will need assistance from various visa programs to continue to offer vital services. Now, for the people who are saying that this letter is just about H-2A and H-2B visas, that would go directly towards H-1B visas, because those are the people that would be qualified under the H-1B program, which would be physicians, nurses, um, scientists, professors, researchers. Those would all come under the H-1B program, which are at the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic. They go on to say there is a school of thought that believes in order to protect the American worker, 
we must prevent any guest worker or unemployment-based visas from being issued. We share the goal of promoting American workers. However, this view is rooted in the mistaken, mistaken assumption that guest worker visas and the businesses that rely on them are one size fits all. And that all foreign employment programs have the same skill requirements, criteria, or length of stay. This would mean that all employment-based or guest worker visas are the same, and any American who is unemployed would qualify or desire to take the jobs guest workers fill. And then they state, I quote, all of this I quote from the letter, this is just not true. And as many of you have heard me say, I don't know how many times, it is not true. And it's nice to hear and have the support of some Republican senators that are coming out and establishing it directly to President Trump in this letter that was sent to him yesterday. I think we all have to, again, understand the parameters of the H-1B program specifically, and also the H-2A, H-2B, the L visas. We have to understand the parameters of them. We have to understand what U.S. companies have to do to actually get them, how much cost and energy and time it takes to get them. And then we have to really go into really, why would you not want them? I mean, they support our economy. They fill positions that we can't get filled. And not only that, they bring in intellectual capital into our country in order to help us grow and expand and develop at a rate that's competitive with the rest of the world. We eliminate that. We basically hurt ourselves, not only from an academic and from an intellectual standpoint, but from definitely from an economic standpoint. So I'm really excited if excited is the word, I'm really happy. And I wanted to do this video quickly to get this out here because we all want some good news, some supportive news about the H-1B program and about everything that's going on right now, threatening the immigration community and suspending this and, and blocking entry and so on and so forth. It's a really difficult time. And I think this is a little bit of a light in the darkness for all of us to see that there are some senators that have come up and actually stood up and wrote in writing to President Trump to support not spending these things. So just so you know, also, this is not the only people that are doing this. There's lots of immigration lawyers out there um, advocating along with myself. The Immigration Lawyers Association is advocating, has just sent a letter also to President Trump discussing it. So it's, it's not, it's not not being talked about. It's a huge topic. And I think there's a lot of people that are trying to educate everyone on the real, the reality of what these visas are and how they help us and not maybe the media driven, you know, dialogue of what they say that they really are. Okay. I'm going to look at a few of these comments to see if there's any questions out there. Um, one of them is, are there additional green cards that might get allocated to EB2 and EB3 this year? You know, that's all controlled. I can answer a few questions for you guys while at the end of this, but I really wanted to focus mostly on this letter, but let me get to a couple of these questions. To answer your question, the EB2 and EB3 this year, there will be, it's all dictated basically on the visa bulletin. So you really have to look at the visa bulletin and see where we are with allocating different types of visas in different categories. Every single month, the Department of State comes out with a listing of what numbers they're working on and how everything is allocated across all the different permanent resident type categories. So you really want to check on that and see how that's going. There is no, you know, there's nothing really stated exactly. There is talk of extra green cards that are going to the healthcare community. But with regard to other categories or other different fields, really not. There's no talk of anything different than normal. Um, let's see what else I can answer here. Will the impact, will that impact H-1B cap exempt positions, university professors? Um, well, what we're trying to do is not have it suspended at all. So we're not going to know anything until and if, the big word is if, there is a suspension. Right now, at this very moment, everything is the same. Anyone who's applying for H-1B programs, it's not, not affected whatsoever. You just continue with applying. Um, if you got picked in the lottery this year, if you're extending your H-1B, if you were approved for an extension um, and you're outside the country and you're waiting for an appointment, none of that is affected. Um, that Nothing has been suspended. This is all talk. This is all President Trump and different politicians talking about trying to suspend or thinking about suspending 
uh, more non-immigrant visas. To date, just so we're very clear, and I think this is really important for everyone to know, to date, only immigrant petitions have been suspended. And it's not even immigrant petitions in the United States. It's only immigrant petitions outside of the United States that were not approved already, visa in hand, you know, immigrant visa in hand, at the time of the um, executive order that came down in April. So everyone else is not affected. And on top of that, that suspension... Um, does not has a lot of exemptions to it. Like if you were sponsored by a U.S. citizen, it doesn't even affect you that suspension. So it, there's many exemptions to that suspension, and there's a video I did on it which you can watch to get any you know real details on that executive order that he put out last month. So as of right now, critical critical to understand that there's been no suspension whatsoever of non-immigrant programs. None. So. I, you know, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot on the media, there's a lot out there, but there's been no suspensions at all of non-immigrant programs. So if you're filing for any type of non-immigrant visa, you can continue filing, you can tell your employers to continue filing. Um, you're not, if you already have a visa in your hand, you're not going to be kicked out of the country anytime soon. We're all just waiting a little bit, holding our breath because things are a little bit um, uncertain right now. We're just holding our breath that it won't happen that, you know, we're going to move into a different period of time where the pandemic's going to start getting under control, companies will start opening up again, and things will slowly start getting back to normal. And the H-1B community, the H-2A, the H-2B, the L-1s, they will all not be the focus, hopefully, in the coming months of, you know, the scapegoat to, oh, well, because we have so much unemployment, we need to shut down all these visas when one thing has nothing to do with the other, as we can see. It has been stated in this letter to further support it. Um, I see what if I have already accepted an offer from a U.S. company, what are the remedies if OPT gets canceled? Once again, um, nothing's been canceled. So I wouldn't even think about it. I wouldn't even think about it. I would continue going forward, stay positive, continue going forward, hoping that nothing's going to happen. I don't think it makes any sense right now. And I think something, you know, I have to close this out a bit, but I think that something that we should all be really focused on during this very difficult time in the immigration community, I think what we really need to see is that the immigration community or the visas that we have um, and the visa programs that are out there are critical and in, in need for this country. They're what we need from these people is really, really important. And what I think we need to focus on right now to make it us feel all a little bit better is that the consulates are more or less closed or they've been closed. USCS is still functioning in the US, but nothing really has been halted in the US except for interviews, you know, and biometric appointments. But by him, by President Trump or anyone else suspending anything right now, it's kind of doesn't I don't want to say it doesn't matter. It does matter. But in reality, in the practicality, you can't go get a visa anyway right now because the consuls are not doing interviews yet. So the whole immigration suspension that happened outside the U.S. is kind of interesting because even though it felt really traumatic, was it really traumatic? Because really it didn't do anything because you couldn't go get your green card anyway. You couldn't get, you couldn't go for your visa appointment anyway. So really nothing happened. And for 60 days, which is already, we're pretty, we're going towards the end of that 60 days. It, it, you know, it didn't open up the consulates. So what I'm trying to come across or what I'm trying to make you feel a little bit better is that even with all this talk of suspending and stopping and everything right now, no matter what happens outside the United States, it really has no effect because we can't go and get our visas and our immigrant visas anyway, because everything's closed. That's why it felt really harsh that executive order suspending immigration, but in reality, it didn't really do much because we couldn't do anything anyway. So it's interesting. Is it really that he was trying to suspend immigration and make a, you know, put his foot down and make a point against the immigrant community for a political reason? Or was it really the fact that he was trying to stop immigrants in order to help the U.S. citizens, you know, and have the competition not as fierce? You can, you, you can think either way. I think in a way, since it had really no effect because you couldn't go for your interview anyway, it was probably a political you know, a political decision and something that he was done just to make the people that are possibly against the immigrant community a little bit more at peace, that he's doing something to stop immigration 
and give a leg up on the U.S. citizens in the U.S. that have lost their jobs. But we all know if you sit back and look at the reality that really it was a nothing really happened because no one could do anything anyway. And if H-1Bs were suspended outside the United States and not in the United States too, nothing would happen because we can't go get our H-1Bs anyway. So we really have to take a deep breath and we have to relax and we have to stay informed, which I will try my hardest to keep you as informed as possible. But as of today, right now, May 28th, there's been no suspension of any type of non-immigrant visas. And the only suspension that's happened is besides the travel bans, the only suspension that's happened is a very small, narrow group of people that are applying for immigrant visas outside the United States, not inside the United States. Okay, I hope this video was informative. I hope that, you know, I can give you as much as I can about what this letter said yesterday that was sent to President Trump. Um, I think that it's a really good step in the right direction. At least we have people or I should say politicians that are being vocal, that are Republicans in the Senate on top of it, that are speaking for these programs and not requesting the suspension of them with really legitimate, intelligent arguments. I think it's a step in the right direction. I think it's something that I wanted to scream about on the top of the mountain for all of us to at least know that other people besides the immigration community in general are speaking and are supporting the immigrant community, the immigrant and non-immigrant community. Please continue. Be I am more than happy to answer your comments and questions. If you just put them in the comments below this, I promise I'll get to all of them. I will respond. Um, I will do videos. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified next time a video comes out. I'm doing more and more and more videos because I really think it is extremely important that we have some reliable, really clear information on what's going on in the immigration community, especially right now during this very difficult time. So please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to write your comments below. I'm more than happy to uh, answer all the questions that you have. Um, you could also contact my office if you need to. All the information is down in the description of this one or on my YouTube channel. And I wish you guys lots of luck. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I will talk to you next time.